¡No! Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, and this is another episode of The Next Level, in which I have a guest co-host, and together we talk about the most recent interview of the week, and suss out a few key topics and help translate them into some specific tactical strategies that you can use to bring your own business to the next level. And before I introduce today's guest co-host, who I'm so excited to tell you about, let me first mention last week's interview, and that was with David Mon, part two. Uh, David's clients include social leaders from around the world, as well as a who's who of brands and institutions. David did an incredible part one that got so much attention, so we did a part two. And our guest co-host for the next level was Sean Lowe, who's just a brilliant consultant. His company is called The Business of Being Creative. So if you missed part two with David Mon last week, check it out, both the actual interview and also the next level with Sean talking about it. And now I am so excited to announce who today's guest co-host is, and that is Lori Ahrens. Lori, welcome to the show. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, I had so many comments, Lori, about your episode, which was released April 1st of this year. And I want to tell everyone, I'll put a link in the show notes so you can get to it. But I recommend everyone listen to Lori's interview. Lori, that was just so wonderful having you on the show. We have to do a part two for sure. I would love that. Yeah. And let me tell everyone listening that if somehow you have not heard the name Lori Ahrens, Lori has been featured in numerous magazine publications and was listed in Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and Martha Stewart Weddings as one of the top planners worldwide. Her clients include trendsetters like Sofia Coppola and Vanessa Getty and, and Christy Turlington and prominent business moguls like Gary Friedman and Frank Caulfield and Eddie DeBartolo. Lori has also created and runs a very successful Wedding Planner Masterclass, uh, which took place last March. Um, and so you have plenty of time to sign up for the next one, right? Is it once a year, Lori? Is it typically March? Yes, it is. March seems to be the sweet spot. Um, so, And we've just announced that we're doing it next March at the beautiful Brush Creek Ranch in Wyoming. Wow. Ooh, that sounds stunning. Yeah. That's it. What a great place. That That's wonderful. Um, and again, we'll have all of this in the show notes. So now at this time, about to announce who the interview is about that Lori and I are going to talk about. And it is Greg Fink. Based in Paris, Greg worked 10 years as a marketing executive for Procter & Gamble in Paris and started shooting weddings 10 years ago and then professionally full-time just five years ago. And yet he's already doing major weddings. Uh, part of his business is in fashion and he also very quickly learned how to most effectively utilize social media as a marketing tool and already has well over 70,000 Instagram followers. Greg also gives master classes, workshops in the spring and is speaking um, at the time of this recording. It's just a couple of weeks at Engage in London. He's going to be talking about authentic branding. So Greg has really moved quickly. So Lori, as far as the topics, you know, one of the ones that I think both of us can really resonate with is because all three of us worked in the corporate world and I, I did as well. And Greg, again, was an executive at Procter and Gamble in marketing. And he was talking about how it just didn't feed his heart. And it got to the point in spite of also going through a divorce at the same time, he left Procter and Gamble and did not have the financial backup, but went for it anyway. I know that that's something that I don't know about the financials, but you experienced the same thing, right? With just, it, it just, your job just didn't, didn't feed you. And so you went for it in, in the industry here. Exactly. Yeah. I was feeling like I wasn't loving my job and I couldn't relate to the marketing, the products that I was marketing, similar to Greg. So I ended up breaking free and starting my own company. What was it that you were doing? What was the kind of job you had? I was a product manager in marketing in a biotech firm. And the products that I was marketing were diagnostic tests um, that you, when you give your blood or your urine or whatever, they test that. So it was not very, not very pretty, not a pretty subject matter. So, but the, the thing that's interesting to me, and I know you can speak to this, and I get so many calls from and people asking me, you know, how what they should do to become a great wedding planner and how to break into the industry. And I pretty much always say, I find it 
super helpful to go work for a big company before you start your own small business because there's so many lessons that you don't even realize that when you're in the thick of it working for a company that you that you take away and that you can apply to your professionalism and the way that you approach clients and all of the sort of intricacies of it that if you just go right into starting your business you kind of miss that and I feel so lucky even though it wasn't the most exotic or beautiful thing that I learned a ton and I think Greg said the same exact thing and it was definitely an amazing stepping stool. Well, I yeah, I I agree with you. I, you know, I had the same experience, and and like you're saying, to look back at it, of course, at the time, I felt like I was just banging my head against the wall. I was so frustrated. But looking back with hindsight, if it weren't for my experience, I sold for IBM and then for Lexmark, and I learned a lot as well about marketing there and and a lot of other really a whole lot of things. And and like you say, I applied it to what I'm doing with my music and entertainment company, and even this podcast. I mean, if it weren't for that experience, and so. Um, I know, yeah, Greg also talked a lot about that, what he got out of it. Um, but it was interesting, Lori, this was also something similar between both you and him that I noticed. He said that uh, for him, he didn't have the financial backup. And so he needed to make a lot right away, especially having a child and dealing with the divorce. And and so he wanted to uh, get to the high-end clientele with high prices. He said he just didn't have a choice. And my God, he did it so quickly. Wasn't that, if I remember our, our conversation when I interviewed you, it, it was the same thing. You went very quickly to the top, didn't you? Yes, I definitely had in my business plan that I knew that I would be the most successful and the most fulfilled if I was working with clients that had the budgets to create the experiences that I kind of loved and lived for. So, um, I just commend um, Greg, though, his bravery to do that during his divorce with a little beautiful little girl um, is just kind of remarkable. I, I was single and I was laid off, so I was paid for a bit um, the beginning. So that was really so helpful. But I knew that in order for me to continue my lifestyle and to, you know, prove to my family and myself that I could make a good living that I had to go to the top. And that was, that was at the top of my business plan. I just couldn't see doing it any other way. And he definitely skyrocketed. Yeah, he he did. And and I would urge everyone, you know, if you listen, you know, if those of you who did not hear the full interview yet from Monday, I would check it out because he talks in a lot of detail about it, as did you, Lori, in your interview. I, I know with Greg, just to kind of sum up what I got out of how he how he pulled it off was that he first of all decided to focus on US clients getting married in France and and that his, you know, he, he was talking about how to get to the high-end clientele so quickly. He had to obviously have differentiators, and one of them was his European touch was different. And at the same time, he was also talking about how he was working with social media and the way he would curate the photos. And and I loved this. Do you remember when he said that? I mean, obviously, just shooting in European locations is stunning, but he lives by the Eiffel Tower. And so very often he would post pictures in front of it. He would get a lot of attention. So he was very intentional about what he was putting out in social media and then combine that with what he called the romanticism that is there as well as the sense of fashion and how you approach, you know, approach what he's doing with those sensibilities that also differentiated him. And again, especially the way he used Instagram. And you had a similar story, I believe, in, in terms of how you differentiated yourself and used social media. Well, when I started, there was no social media, but I, I definitely used it when it came about yeah, and it sure definitely have. helped grow my business a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, he's he's very um, savvy and he has a background in marketing and I have a degree in marketing as well. And, you know, he definitely applied it and he's worked incredibly hard. Um, I've just worked with him on a big wedding, a three day wedding weekend in Carmel um, the summer and 
he was so hardworking and so passionate and so easy to work with. I could just sense from him that this was the most important, you know, job for him and that he wasn't ever going to let let the bride down or or me down. He just was very confident and calm and collected, which I just was like extremely impressed that he brings everything and he takes us really seriously. And I've always taken my position extremely seriously. So I admire that a lot. And he's worked so hard. He doesn't, you know, if you watch him on Instagram, he's like, his weddings almost every weekend all over Europe and the world. And it, those are not easy weekends. You don't sleep, you're exhausted. So, so mm. impressed. Well, you brought up uh, just a couple of minutes ago, you talked about how he's also easy to, uh, to work with. And I'd like to stick with that for a moment. I, I think that's really critical. In my uh, music company, Cushion Entertainment, I have learned over and over, especially in my early years, I mean, not that I wasn't easy to deal with, but I know that in the in, in the early years, um, and, and sometimes even kind of recently, there have been moments where I realize, you know, I'm not really being as flexible as I need to be. And I've talked to planners um, like yourself about that and how it's so much more than just the talent that we have um, in this, you know, whether we're designing cakes or photography, videography, floral design, whatever it is, it's so much more, right, than just the talent. It's also how we are technically to work with for a planner, for a designer, for whoever's bringing us into the job or, man, let's say, managing the whole team, right? That, that seems to be really critical. It, 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 that's a big part of it for you, isn't it? How easy we are to work with. A hundred percent. If you're not, you don't work on my wedding. So <laughs> it's all about the team. And I learned that as a product manager in marketing, like I led teams to launch products and the team effort is everything and communication and all of that. And he was very clear. He was very direct, but in the nicest and most professional way. And he was absolutely a team player in every sense of the word. Mm. Let's also talk about uh, managing expectations with clients because he he brought that up. I had uh, mentioned how consumers' level of education and awareness has has really risen quite a bit. And I asked him, you know, how's that affecting your business? And and he said that, you know, one of the pitfalls is that sometimes the clients want him to shoot like kind of like examples from social media that they're looking into, but they're not taking into consideration the environment where they're going to be for their wedding and weather and all kinds of other things. And, you know, obviously he doesn't want to reproduce that those kind. He wants to bring his style to it. Um, so, he talked about how to manage expectations and has to remind them sometimes that they booked him for his style. And he felt that being really direct was really critical because if you're not direct, uh, again, with communicating the expectations, managing them, then there's going to be problems. Yeah, exactly. I mean, think about the importance of a wedding photographer and how much is riding on their shoulders. Like, any equipment failure or if you miss getting grandmother in the family portrait or, you know, there's so many things, the timing, the light and weddings are like a theatrical performance and they, it's, it's going. So the pressure is huge. And so I think you have to be confident and you have to be clear with your clients. And that's the way I approach the planning as well. I just want to make sure that we're setting them up for a happy, successful wedding day and event day. And ultimately, when they see their photos, they're beyond ecstatic. Mm. You know, we also talked about uh, branding, you know, and this is also connected, you know, obviously to how quickly he was able to break into the market, into the luxury end. And, and he's talking about branding c coming up soon and engage and, and how building a brand is how you stand out, you know, and, and all the elements behind a brand, the product, the service, your network, your communication, your ethics, your values for your company and so much more. And that branding and marketing really is more than just communication. And, and he kind of brought it all down back to authenticity and how important it is to build a company thinking about about you know being authentic but thinking long term looking at the long tail instead of short term 
How did you view that? How do you feel about that aspect of branding? Well, I think it shows that he has a marketing background. He not only studied it undergraduate, but in graduate school, and he he lived it at Procter & Gamble before he started his company. You really need to think about how you're perceived and from not only your logo to your website to your social media presence to how you show up to meetings to how you communicate not only with clients but with vendors you know it's a whole package and if you're consistent and if you make sure that you deliver on a consistent level that brand will be known throughout the industry as as something that you can count on and you kind of know what you're going to get. Mm. When you mentioned um, as one of those elements, you know, even the way you show up at a meeting, what, what did you mean by that? I think it's, it's important to take all of these opportunities and, and be professional and show that this is your career and your livelihood. And, you know, the way you dress, the way mm, yeah. you plan the meetings, the way you communicate to vendors and to the client, all of that is showing the client and the industry sort of who you are and that you take this very seriously and the kind of communication that you provide is an example of that and you've got to take advantage of it. Yeah. So thinking, you know, you know, again, being really intentional all across all elements of what we're doing is, is really critical. That's what I, I'm taking away from this. And I get that. You know, one, just one more topic too. I, I thought it was interesting. It was more toward the beginning of the conversation when um, we were talking about his experience uh, working for a Fortune 500 company and how he was able to subsequently build his business so quickly. It was interesting. He talked about how learning humility was so important to him. And, you know, I asked, you know, more about that. He was saying, well, you know, with a company as big as Procter & Gamble, who has an enormous amount of competition, that he learned that he had to stay humble because if he stayed humble and respected everyone, even the competition, then you, he was saying how you just never know who can bring you amazing and big business and, and that a pitfall is forgetting that fact. I could not agree with that more. I even, I think I talked about this in my interview with you, but back in in the day early on in my career when I wasn't as busy, I had a little bit of a break. I helped somebody um, who was struggling with their marketing and I ended up receiving a lead from her that ended up getting me a job with Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. So, Oh, that's right. That was a phenomenal story, Lori. <laughs> I, don't, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I helped her and I think giving, you know, paying it forward brings it back like a million times. But I think mm. I also have this saying that you're only as good as your last wedding and people kind of get mad at me for saying that. But I truly believe that you cannot afford to slip up. Like you have to be humble and you have to make sure that you're bringing everything you have to each client and each situation. And I think that's what he's talking about. You don't want to only bring your A game if you're working with a billionaire or somebody that is super beautiful and you know that, you know, their photos are going to be spectacular. You need to you need to treat everyone with the same respect and you have no idea what it's going to do. <laughs> That's true. Very true. Well, also, I'm thinking that by really, truly being humble, that it opens our minds more to more possibilities. And creatively, I think that's a big part of it, too. Right. I agree. I mean, the weird thing about social media that I struggled with early on and is that in a way you and also having your own little business, you kind of have to toot your own horn a lot. And I wasn't raised that way. Like I was raised to really be humble and to not brag. And I kind of had to learn that it was okay that I had to be able to speak to my strengths and, and talk about 
some accolades and things because you need to stand apart and I'm the the face of the business. So if if I don't do it, then I'm probably not going to ultimately get to where I want to go. So, but the humility and all of it and staying humble, despite that you need to toot your own horn is, is the graceful balance that you need, I think, to be respected and to be trusted by the industry and also your clients. Yeah, totally agree. Well, that is all we have time for today. I want to thank everyone for listening and be sure to check out the website of Greg Fink and it's Greg Fink, Greg F-I-N-C-K. His social media handles is Greg Fink and all of this will be in the show notes. Also want to thank you, Lori. I really appreciate what you brought to uh, the show today. I always so much wisdom. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome, Andy. I'm really loving being a part of your podcast and I'm a regular listener. So Aww. thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. And to check out Lori Aarons, her website is LoriAarons.com. That's Lori, L-A-U-R-I-E, Aarons, A-R-O-N-S. And again, it'll all be in the show notes at TheWeddingBiz.com. Uh, for her social media handles, for Instagram, it's at Lori Aarons. And for Facebook, it's Lori Aarons Special Events. And again, Lori was on The Wedding Biz April 1st of, of this year, 2019, and again, want to mention the website where you can get the show notes, which is theweddingbiz.com, as well as on your cell phone podcast app. And be sure to subscribe and share if you enjoyed this. Please share it with your colleagues and people who you feel can benefit from it. And want to mention that next week, we're going to have Vanessa Kreckel of Two Paper Dolls, a pioneering custom design house offering branding and logo development and website design and development and custom invitations and stationery. Want to also thank the sponsor for today, which is Kushner Entertainment. Absolutely wonderful, incredible entertainment that works worldwide um, and also does an incredible amount of custom entertainment design. So check out kushnerentertainment.com and we'll catch you all next week on The Wedding Biz. 